Live to Michael Bakurku from the OSCE mission monitoring the recovery efforts and the investigation at the Malaysian airliner crash site. Thank you very much, Mr. Basturku, for joining us. Now, the US president earlier, well, he voiced his concerns, didn't he, that the work of experts at the crash site is being hindered. But earlier, your OSCE mission said there was no longer interference. What is the situation like now? Right. Okay. So well, thank you for having me. Um, so we've been on the ground here for four days now, uh, although we've had a team here for three months. But uh, for four days, we have been focused on the crash area. And from day one, actually, we were able to uh, bring with us uh, uh, experts from the Ukrainian side, from the uh, civil aviation uh, department there. And uh, they have, uh, they seemed, when we talked to them today, after three or four days on the ground, quite pleased in terms of the area that they were able to search um, for clues to what caused the crash. Also today, uh, for the very first time, international experts uh, came in and we facilitated their passage to uh, the train station in Torres, uh, near about 10 or 15 kilometers near the crash site, where the bodies uh, were being stored in refrigerated cars. We also took them to some of the crash uh, sites, to three or four of the eight major impact sites, and they were able to look at the situation there. Now, I want to be clear, these are forensic experts. They're not crash investigators from the, from the Netherlands. Um, but uh, again, you know, we had uh, fairly good access uh, uh, today, according to our discussions with them. Now, your mission is, as you've put it, not to investigate anything. So what does the OSCE do at a plane crash scene then? Well, uh, you know, probably it's the first time the OSC has been drawn into, um, you know, being involved in a plane crash of this sort. Um, our mandate is clear. It's to uh, re establish the facts and to report on them, as we've been doing here for the past three months, and also to facilitate dialogue. So I think that second part, uh, the facilitation of dialogue and getting things to connect, getting people to move, especially our monitors, from one place to the other, uh, that has been a result partially because of our long time here on the ground and the relationships that have been built up. The other thing, of course, you know, in the absence of so many, so much information, uh, our, you know, it may look quite simplistic to some people, but being able to go out every day, collect what we see, report in a very neutral, objective way, and then that information goes out to 57 member states of the OSCE, including the Russian Federation, United States, Ukraine, and then to the general public. In that void of information, I think uh, that's played a big role. And why has it taken so long for international experts to arrive to the scene? Well, maybe I can best answer that by, you know, the, the process the Dutch uh, investigators uh, went through. It took them, I think, a day, day and a half to get here. There are quite a bit of logistical and security uh, issues to address. Um, don't forget that the crash scene is in the middle of a conflict zone. And, for example, between here and uh, the crash area, there are probably about 10 checkpoints. So everything here takes time. Uh, you know, you have to explain what you're going to do. Uh, it takes some, you know, uh, negotiation. Uh, and, but, yeah, w uh, we've done a lot, I think, in the past four days. But there is a lot of work that is a far, far better placed for others to do. And, um, you know, it remains to be seen uh, when uh, the other... Uh, uh, experts will come here. I can tell you, though, that just in the past hour or so, we did uh, uh, bump into some um, uh, a delegation, if you will, from Malaysia. They've made it here, and uh, tomorrow uh, we're expecting that they'll want to go out to the crash site uh, to begin their own investigation. And, and just finally, we know you have a hectic schedule, but anti-government militia have promised cooperation access to evidence to international experts. Is that promise being fulfilled, Michael? Um, I can only say really what our own mission has experienced and as I alluded to earlier is that uh, we did have to go through quite a bit of logistical hurdles um, but today was um, fairly good in the sense that we 
did reach the area we needed to look at fairly quickly. Uh, we did have fairly good security, but you know, I must say, and we have reported on this day after day, is that there's no sec perimeter security around that crash site. It is a big area, granted, and there are many villages there and so on, but um, normally, in a, you know, when a crash like this happens, one would expect the first thing is a secure perimeter to be established. So that has not happened and we have reported on it. OSCE spokesperson Michael Basturku, we do appreciate your time this hour. Thank you.